and welcome to GameSack. We all love great ports of games to our favorite consoles, but what about those ports that they, you know, royally screwed up on? Yep, that's what this episode's about, in case you haven't figured it out by the title. First up is one of my favorite early Genesis games. It got a port that, well... <sighs> Thunder Force 3 from Technosoft was released on the Genesis in 1990. It's a somewhat short but sweet side-scrolling shooter, or shmup if you want to sound like an idiot. It really increased the fun factor over Thunder Force 2, which was barely over a year old at the time this one came out. There are lots of amazing stages, fun power-ups, and exciting bosses to fight. The graphics are excellent for a 4 megabit cartridge, and the music is even better. The biggest letdown is probably the voices, which took a big drop in quality compared to the previous game. Also, it's pretty easy unless you crank up the difficulty, and it's even easier if you're not playing on a Japanese console. Still, overall, it was probably one of the best, if not the best, horizontal shooters of its time and a true classic. In late 1990, Technosoft converted Thunder Force 3 into an arcade game called Thunder Force AC. You know, for arcade. The first three stages are directly from Thunder Force 3, though the level layouts have had a couple of very minor changes here and there. Stage 4 is a brand new outer space stage with some great music. Stage 5 is a weird merging of two stages from Thunder Force 2, and then it's back to the regular Thunder Force 3 stages to finish the game. They added a lot of voices that play during each stage. My personal favorite is the dismay the announcer expresses when you're down to your last life. I also love the crazy text you get in the ending, complete with typos. Naturally, it's a great game, even if it kind of feels like a bastardized version of Thunder Force 3. In 1991, Thunder Force AC came to the Super Nintendo as Thunder Spirits, courtesy of Technosoft themselves, but published by Sega in North America and Toshiba in Japan. Apparently, Technosoft didn't really have much of a grasp on the Super NES hardware, as this port comes up really short. Since Thunder Force AC was relatively unknown here, most people compared it directly to Thunder Force 3 on a Genesis. The first thing you're going to notice is the slowdown. And how often does that slowdown happen? How about every single time you fire a weapon if an enemy is on screen? Yeah, every single time. If you've collected the options, the screen will even slow down when you fire even if there's nothing else on the screen. It's incredibly bad, but hey, on the bright side, I guess that makes a rather short game longer? The graphics themselves somehow seem slightly less impressive than what we saw on the Genesis. They didn't take advantage of the increased palette of colors that the console offers at all. We do get some Mode 7 in the ending, but honestly, it's not a whole lot better than the scaling that was in the Sega version. Even the sound and music are downgraded. Some of the enemy explosions sound like they belong on a TurboGrafx-16 or maybe even the Sega Master System. Technosoft knew they came up short with this one, so they tried to add a few things to make up for it. For example, there's two new stages, or rather different stages, compared to the arcade game. One replaces the outer ship space battle in Stage 6. This one adds a short but cool new music track that I haven't heard in any other Technosoft game. The other new stage extends and redesigns stage 8 to give it a little bit more beef. It also has new music. Then, they added a stereo effect to the weapon firing depending on where your ship is placed horizontally on the screen. 
Lastly, they fixed some of the typos in the ending text, though it's still as nonsensical as ever. This is still a fun game, but hardly a classic, and there are certainly many better shooters on the console that you could play. When John Madden Football from Electronic Arts was released on the Genesis in late 1990, it was revolutionary. I mean, it's a sports game that was actually enjoyable to play. You get a realistic game of football, for the time anyway. I remember I used to play this one every Saturday with my dad, and we both enjoyed it, and video games weren't something that were in his skill set. But he did manage to get good enough to beat me more than a few times. This was, and still is, an amazing game, top to bottom, and it sold extremely well, more than five times their initial projections. The series would go on and on with a new game every year, to this very day in fact. Well, in late 1991, Electronic Arts decided to port John Madden Football to the Super NES to get a few more dollars into their bank account. And man, was this version ever a letdown. It's based mostly on the first Genesis game, but here they decided to use Mode 7 for the field graphics. Turns out that the programmers were not at all prepared for this. As you can see, the game runs at a snail's pace and a very low frame rate. This not only looks horrible, and boy does it ever, but it also really affects gameplay. With the frame rate being so low, it can be hard to position your receivers where the ball will land during a pass. This game is so sluggish that I don't think I've ever even played an entire four quarters before shutting it off, and today is no exception. I wonder how many people actually have played through the season on this one. Besides being slow, the graphics look blocky with very little detail. One time the graphics even glitched out on me and I had to reset the game to fix it. Unfortunately, I lost the file where that happened and I had to re-record the game for this episode. Lucky me. The sounds are also rather muffled compared to the Genesis version. About the only good thing is that the crowd noise sounds more like a crowd and less like someone left the water running. The next game, simply called John Madden Football 93, improved it a little, but it was still far from an optimal or even a smooth experience. In fact, they didn't get this one right until late 1993 with Madden NFL 94. Now this is way more like it. Everything here is improved. The gameplay is much snappier, the Mode 7 looks way more detailed, and the movement is light years better. It just goes to show you how truly piss poor the first John Madden was on the system in comparison. And I guess the second one as well. Cut. Up next is a game that was such a huge hit that it's no surprise that it got a ton of ports. It's also no surprise that a few of those ports, well, I don't know, suck the big one. Street Fighter 2 from Capcom doesn't really need an introduction, but I might as well show you a bit of this 1991 arcade game just so you can appreciate how piss poor some of these ports were. As you likely know, this six-button game really changed the arcade scene and resulted in the fighting game boom. This had so many imitators it's not even funny, and only a few are able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this one. For good reason, too, as this featured excellent design that couldn't simply be imitated. It even got its own incremental follow-ups like Super Street Fighter 2, which introduced even more characters. This game was a massive success, and as a result, it was ported everywhere. Round two, fight! The 16-bit versions of this game, like the Super NES version here, are fantastic, all things considered. But there was more money to be made, so it ended up on other platforms too, like the Game Boy. Yep, they actually made this. Well, a developer called Sun L did, and Capcom published it. Obviously, with the Game Boy only having two buttons, the moveset for each character has been somewhat, eh, let's just say, compromised. 
You have one punch button and one kick. That's it. You have nine characters to choose from. Dalsim, E. Honda, and Vega decided to sit this one out. Interestingly, the artwork and move animations look and feel more like Super Street Fighter 2 than plain old vanilla Street Fighter 2. For example, Chun-Li has her fireballs which she didn't have in the original Street Fighter 2. Obviously there's going to be some cuts on the Game Boy, and well, cut they did. The first obvious thing is that the game is in black and white, or black and green, or however you want to view it on whichever Game Boy model you have. Basically four shades of grayscale. But this is to be expected as it comes with the territory. Unfortunately, the frame rate is incredibly choppy and it makes the gameplay feel rather slow and laggy. You can do most of your moves though if you input them a bit slower. I found that it was pretty easy to win if I just stayed in my opponent's face and did close attacks. Any human beings or other life has been removed from all of the backgrounds. I guess maybe the fighters are the last people left alive in the entire world? Who knows? When you play as character versus the same character, they look the same, so it can get rather confusing sometimes. Lastly, there are no individual endings for each character, just a congratulations screen. Yeah, it's pretty bad, but I could see it being somewhat entertaining if you were stuck on a trip to someplace boring your parents insisted on taking you and you didn't have access to a proper console version of the game. But I can't see this one having much use at all to anyone beyond that. bad as the Game Boy version is, it's an absolute masterpiece compared to Street Fighter 2 for the Master System. This was handled by Tectoy and released only in Brazil. Thank God! This one seems to use art from Super Street Fighter 2 as well. Sadly, that's as super as it gets here. In this one, you can only choose from 8 of the original characters. Once again, Dalsim, E. Honda, and Vega decided not to participate, but this time Zangief decided to join them on the sidelines. While the characters look decent, the stages all have tons of detail missing. Sagat's stage feels particularly empty. The gameplay is what really got screwed up here. Like the Game Boy game, you only have two buttons, a punch and a kick. But they totally screwed up how the special moves work. The commands to do them are completely different. I swear, one time I threw a fireball while using a direction on the D-pad and the kick button. Sometimes I'm able to pull off a move, but I can never figure out how I did it. The music is quite minimal and the sound effects are all but non-existent, but surprisingly the announcer voices are really good. Round one, fight, dial. Once again, all of the characters share the same ending. By the way, just so you know, this game does not work properly if you play it on a Genesis with an EverDrive or with a power base converter. It runs, but you can only play in two player mode no matter what you do. I had to dig out my real master system to play this one properly here. This port was handled by Tectoy, and I don't care what anyone says, they have rather low standards. I don't recommend that you play this one at all. Even worse still is Street Fighter 2 for the Amiga from US Gold. This game is insanely choppy and broken. You can choose a two button mode, but I wasn't able to pull off any special moves at all, no matter if I tried doing them fast, normal, or slow. They just didn't work. What's more is that crouching attacks don't work right. If you crouch and press an attack button, you'll do a standing attack. What you need to do is hold a crouch and let your character stay that way for a bit before you press attack. Then you can do a crouching attack. I also tried the one button mode. Here you can only punch, but curiously I was able to do a few special moves by inputting them regularly. Even on the easiest difficulty, this game is nearly impossible because of the choppiness and the extremely tough AI. The graphics only take up three quarters of the screen for some reason, and they look worse than any of the 16-bit era ports. The music is random. You can play a round, lose, continue, only to play that same round again, but with different music. I often found myself fighting to the character select theme. The game sounds decent, but you can tell that the effort they put into the game was quite limited, just like my skill at this version. Then there's Street Fighter 2 for the PC, also from US Gold. 
I can't decide if this is better or worse than the Amiga version. The graphics look fantastic, if they're paused. But man, this is choppy, if not choppier than the Amiga port. The jumping in this one is extremely floaty. You even go off the damn screen. Again, you have one punch and one kick, but even these are broken. The punch and kick buttons often do the opposite attack. You have to let go for a while and wait for their functions to reset before the kick button actually kicks again. Trying to be precise with your movements is very frustrating here. Still, all of the fights are easy, except for Dalsim, who just spams his long range attacks over and over. Yeah, good luck. It's almost impossible to get close enough to hit him. Once again, the music is random and sounds absolutely awful, and there are no sound effects at all. If you switch the sound card to Roland, the music sounds better, but it's still pretty bad. And again, there are no sound effects. Even if you pick the option that uses two sound cards, you don't get any sound effects unless I'm missing an option here, I don't know. I'm surprised that Capcom allowed US Gold to release these games. I'm under the impression that Capcom did not care at all about the quality of the ports that weren't handled by them directly. US Gold obviously did not have the talent to handle these ports. Now you probably haven't even heard of these next two games, unless you're super smart and with it, like I am. If you have heard of them, then you have a super high IQ, like I do. 82. <laughs> Alien Syndrome from Sega was released in the arcades in 1987. This overhead run and gun was obviously inspired by the 1986 movie Aliens from Jimmy Cameron. In this one, you set a time bomb at the start of your mission. You have until it counts down to find and rescue enough of the hostages. You have a few different weapons you can collect, which makes the game more fun, as do the little options you get, which can supplement your firepower. Once you have enough hostages, you make your way to the exit. Go to the exit. Here, you'll fight the boss, who is patiently laying in wait the entire time. Defeat it and escape. Then the time bomb finally explodes the ship or structure that you're on. Off screen, unfortunately, we don't get to see it happen. Either way, all of these aliens are definitely dying, which is a good thing because anything that's not human is most certainly bad and evil. But depending on how well you do decides how many humans get to survive. All humans are on the side of good. This is a fun game that feels a touch ominous to play with the creepy music and the juicy aliens which splatter when they die. It's even more fun to play with a friend if you have one, which you probably don't. Not if you're the kind of person who says shmup anyway. Be warned though, because this game is tough and it offers no continues. Of course, you can always cheat and set it to free play like I did. Oh. Go to the exit. Alien Syndrome arrived on the Sega Master System later that same year. It's not very good. In fact, it feels like the developers of this port only heard the arcade game described to them verbally and just ported it from that. This version is much slower, though your mission remains the same. The screen scrolls from room to room instead of continuously. Why did they decide to do this? Were they playing some Zelda when they were making this game and they thought it would work great here? The Master System controller sucks at diagonal, so maybe you want to use a Genesis controller instead? Nope! You can go straight to hell because this game requires the use of a Master System controller. If you try to play with a Genesis controller, you're forced to walk to the left at all times. Not only that, but this game is now single player only. Well, technically two people can play, but it's two player alternating and not simultaneously. Exciting. The cool flamethrower weapon is gone, as are a couple of the other weapons. Also gone are the cool options that you can get which follow you around. To make up for this, they added a brand new enemy which is on every screen in every level. Yep, these green faces on the floor that shoot at you are exclusive to the Master System version. Pretty creative. Speaking of enemies, they materialize out of nowhere, and you need to make sure you're not near them when they become solid. 
At least the boss fights are pretty fun, though toned down from the arcade. Some bosses even feel completely new. Naturally, the graphics are quite a bit toned down, seeming similar in each level. I like that all of the hostages are now, for some reason, laying on cots. The music is extremely minimal, as are the sound effects. Like the arcade, the same tune plays in every single level. The game supports FM sound, but it doesn't make it a ton better. The boss theme is pretty good, though. What's funny is that Tengen licensed this game from Sega to bring out on the NES without Nintendo's approval, and it's far closer to the arcade. In fact, the NES version is a better game overall, by leaps and bounds, actually. Why couldn't we get something like this on Sega? As a game, the Master System version isn't horrible, but it's certainly not great. As a port to the arcade game, though, yeah, it's pretty bad. Mercs came to the arcades in 1990 from Capcom. This is a really cool overhead running gun that's the sequel to Capcom's own Commando from 1985. It allows up to three players simultaneously on a vertical oriented screen. There's a word for having the screen like this. Damn, it escapes me at the moment though. Oh well. Anyway, you have a few different weapon types you can get and you can power them up as well. You have a life bar which is nice and that means you don't die in a single hit. The stages are fairly short, but they're fun and the boss fights are pretty neat. One thing that's super cool about this one is that you can often commandeer vehicles to ride in and shoot out of. They don't last long, but you never don't want to use them. There are even boats you can drive. Or you can mow down enemies with their very own gun turrets. Yeah, that'll teach you to build these. The graphics are excellent, which is par for the course in Capcom arcade games, and there's even some nice music in here. There's no shortage of good times to be had in this one. Mercs was ported to the Genesis in 1991. This was a fairly faithful port, but naturally everything has been downgraded to fit on the Genesis hardware and also the size of the cartridge. I mean, this is 8 megabits, whereas the arcade is closer to around 64 megabits. It still has smooth control and it's still a great time though. Its biggest sin is that they cut the two-player mode for some reason. To make up for this, we got the original mode. The gameplay rules are mostly the same as the arcade mode, but you can collect items to make you stronger, have more life, and run faster. You can also find other people who will fight with you with their own weapons. You can switch between them on the fly as needed, and they all have their own life bar. There's also a shop that reminds me of Forgotten Worlds where you buy stuff using the metals that you collect. Surprised it's not Zenny. Uh, I guess that's because Sega made this mode, not Capcom. This mode is much longer than the arcade mode as well. Overall, this is not the best port in the world, but honestly, not awful by any means. If you want a piss poor port, then there's the Master System version. It came out only in the PAL region in 1992. Once again, it's single player only, but unsurprisingly, this doesn't have any special modes to make up for that loss. The first thing you notice is how ugly this game looks. The enemies usually exhibit some choppy movement if there's more than one of them on screen. Plus the artwork, if you can call it that, is quite ugly. Look at these tanks with their tiny turrets, they just look very poorly drawn. The collision between you and the background is often suspect, like here. I can't get any closer to this wall on the left. You'll usually need to stay this far away from any background object unless it's above you. What's more is there's no music here during the levels. You just get a few rather generic sound effects. The only time you ever hear music is at the title screen and right before you approach a boss. I'm not sure why they did this. This is a 4 megabit game which means it's one of the largest games on the console. Our type on the Master System was also 4 megabits. It was able to have all of the music and sound effects and they even added an extra level with its own music. What the hell happened here? It makes the game feel so empty and primitive. You only have one life and no continues, so have fun. Actually, you're not going to have fun. Avoid this version, because I didn't.
And there you go, more piss poor ports. You gotta admit, some of those Street Fighter ports are so bad that they're actually funny. Anyway, what are some ports from one platform to another that you felt were piss poor? Let me know, and in the meantime, thank you for watching GameSack. I wish I had a joystick that gave me great control. What you need is the Sega Arcade Stick. No, no I don't. Well then how about the six button Sega Arcade Stick? Sorry, this just does not fit the bill. Well, try the Neo Geo joystick. Please, you must be joking. How about the Saturn Mission Stick? Oh, come on, this just does not offer the control that I'm looking for. How about twice the Saturn Mission Sticks? How about twice the amount of no? Maybe try the Saturn Twin Stick. Again, the control just isn't there. There's always a PlayStation Analog Joystick. I want to control my video games, and this is just dumb. You want control? Then try the Sega Control Stick. Oh, hells to the air. Now, this is what I'm talking about. So much control. control, so much stick. With the Sega Control Stick, I can use a stick to control my Sega games. Control. The Sega Control Stick. $29.99 outlawed in 16 states.